All right, so I want to address these comments and question. So let me read them first. Um, there has to be something prophetic about AI. It is completely revolutionizing society. Is there any possible way it could be the fourth beast? All right, so let's examine this. Um, so the first thing I want to look at is uh, in the Bible, I want to look at the word device. Okay, and before we do that, let's look at the definition of device. Okay, that which is formed by design or invented, scheme, scheme artificial contrivance, stratagem, projects, sometimes in a good sense, more generally in a bad sense, as artifices are usually employed for bad purposes in a good sense his you know all right so an emblem intended to represent a family person action quality of suitable motto motto all right invention genius faculty of devising as a man of noble device a spectacle or show all right so just to give some clarity to the definition all right so now let's go look in the Bible and maybe you'll see why I think this is relevant all right so we'll do it this way and then we'll highlight the word and we'll just sort of scroll through these and to find out every device which shall be put to him with thy cunning men and with the cunning men of my Lord David thy father okay and his device that he had devised against the Jews that his wicked device he disappoints the devices of the crafty behold I know your thoughts and the devices and let them be taken in the devices they imagined a mischievous device he makes the devices of the people of none effect All right. and who brings wicked devices to pass further not as wicked device and be filled with their own devices but a man of wicked devices a man of wicked devices is hated there are many devices in a man's heart um, for uh, so whatsoever thy hand finds to do do it with thy might for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest the instruments also of the churl are evil he devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words and I knew not that they had devised devices against me and devise a device against you we'll walk after our own devices and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart and they said come let us devise devices against Jeremiah for his devices against Babylon and their device against me all day his devices against the strongholds where they shall forecast devices against him and a man's heart devise for we are not ignorant of his devices right the very last mention lest Satan should get advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices okay just to give you an overlook uh, an idea of that particular word now uh, you know and that's in uh, there has to be something prophetic about AI it is completely revolutioning society so my contention is that uh, what we're seeing today is it's always been uh, you know there's always been these particular um, seemingly advances <laughs> you know all these different new things that seem new but they're not really new at all in fact we'll go look at a verse here nothing new under the sun I think no uh, no new thing that's what it is no no new thing under the sun right the thing that has been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done 
and there is no new thing under the sun so in my opinion I think uh, you go uh, you know look at uh, how it was before the flood of Noah and you see that men were living 900 plus years and you I mean it from a logical standpoint you have to I have to believe that these guys were extremely technologically advanced they knew all about electricity and uh, every bit as advanced as we are today and in fact I think it took them a short time to get there and now after the flood God shortens the lifespan of men and so we are slowly getting back to that point that they quickly were before the flood so there's no new thing under the Sun alright so in my opinion uh, you know again there's nothing new about all this technology and you know this, these ideas that are these new devices are revolutioning revolutionizing society I think there's always been something that seems new but is not really new at all and it's just a different way of going about the same things that have been already here all right um, so let's go I mean like okay one, let give you one example okay so you think about how the phones are really revolutionizing uh, society now you can talk to you know people all the time well before there were phones people talk to other people all the time that hasn't changed all right you know people used to sit outside their houses and their yards and so on and so forth and talk to their neighbors and the people around them and they would gather together and talk now everybody sits on a phone and talks it's the same thing nothing's really changed it's just the way uh, they go about it that has changed all right so let's deal with this um, is there any possible way it could be the fourth B so let's let's go through this real quickly um, the four beasts are in Daniel all right and the four beasts are four kings which shall arise out of the earth all right if we can get to there uh, Daniel 7 verse 17 these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth now Daniel mentions the first three beasts the Babylon the Medes and Persians and the Greek empires okay no dispute in that now he doesn't mention the fourth beast because the fourth beast had not come into power as of that time but we can conclude who the fourth beast is by reading Luke chapter 2 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed so right there that tells us the Roman Empire is the fourth beast okay and therefore when we go to the book of Revelation that talks about the beast all right we see not that beast um, but what we're going to see here is that this fourth beast not those beasts this fourth beast as soon as I get to it as soon as I get to it alright there's that now the beast that rise or that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and saw a beast rise up out of the sea alright and the beast which I saw alright so and all the world wondered after the beast okay now 
this uh, coincides also with uh, what we read in Revelation 17, so let me explain this real quickly. The deadly wound that was healed, and in Revelation 17 when it says the beast that was and is not and yet is, it's talking about the same fourth beast. And it's, and it's um, explaining for us that this beast is was a physical empire like the first three beast but then it transitioned into a spiritual empire and we know that by reading Revelation 17 for example when it talks about this fourth beast the beast being the great whore alright and I, I reckon we ought to go there hadn't we Let's do it this way. All right, and here it says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. All right, so he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scholar, scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. Now this woman is symbolic of a religion. Now it's called the great whore because she pretends to perform the duties of the bride. And the bride of Christ is the church, the people of God. Alright, so you think of a, a hooker is not the wife but she pretends to perform the duties of the wife and that's why uh, this is called the great whore because she is not the wife but she is pretending to be the wife all right and the beast that was and is not and yet is okay so there's no there should be no confusion no doubt about it the great whore is the beast of revelation and Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world therefore there cannot be a fifth beast there's gonna be four beasts and then the end of the world alright and so I think we can go here to second Thessalonians who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God now this is in reference to the Antichrist which is in reference to the beast the, the fourth beast the beast of Daniel the fourth beast of Daniel and the beast of Revelation uh, it's not different entities, it's one and the same. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So let's go back to Revelation 17. There are seven kings, and five are fallen. One is, and the other is not yet come, and when he comes he must continue a short space. This is in this is talking about a succession of kings no question about it all right and but then again these are different kings right these are not the kind of kings that were in play in the t time of Daniel uh, where they had physical kingdoms but this is now speaking of spiritual kingdom all right the great whore that sits upon many waters that's explained. And the woman that thou sawest um, right there. And the waters which thou sawest where the whore sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Alright, so this spiritual empire is all throughout the world okay and the woman which thou sawest is that great city 
which reigns over the kings of the earth. All right, think about this. Seven kings, five are fallen, one is. That's talking about a specific lineage of kings and a succession of kings. And then this is speaking of the physical empires of the world. All right, this spiritual empire here that it's in reference to reigns over the physical empires, the, phys the physical kings of the earth. All right, now keep in mind who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God alright so give me a second here let me think just for one second neither shall he regard the God of his father nor the desire of women nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. You see the connection there? Are you able to connect the dots? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that temple of God is just a representation of the temple of God it's not the true temple of God so keep that in mind all right for he shall magnify himself above all all right now this is a critical uh, in my opinion to fully understand this and why people want to deliberately reject this I, th I I got many opinions on that but uh, you notice here it says he shall neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women it's very clear to me that this is talking about one entity that exists today and this can only relate to one entity today all right. You, in my opinion, it's foolishness to completely disregard what this is saying in relation to it. this fourth beast will have no desire of women. All right. To me, you got to make a connection. Otherwise, it's a vain verse. Uh, this is not a vain verse. There's uh, value in this it means something and it helps us to see who this fourth beast is all right so I hope that explains it uh, you know pretty simply um, you know when people talk about the Antichrist they're talking about the fourth beast all right when they talk about a one world order they're talking about the fourth beast and the one world order is the new world order and it, it, it's it's evidence that there is a world power in place already and they're coming up with new orders you know it's not like something happened and then now hey a new world order they've been in power for a very very long time and they're the same people in power today that were in power in the time of Jesus when baby Jesus was born when baby Jesus was when he grew up and uh, began his ministry and all that sort of stuff and he laid down his life for us when he was dead and when he resurrected from the dead and when he ascended to heaven during that whole time the same people in power then are in power today because I'm telling you Daniel says there are four beasts until the end of the world and we know the third beast the Greek Empire was no longer in power during the time of baby Jesus 
So therefore, the fourth beast had to have been in power at that time, and they have to still be in power today because it, the world has not ended. Now, the beast that was and is not and yet is, the beast whose deadly wound was healed, was the transitioning of the physical empire into a spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church.